Uh, good evening to everybody who's uh, come into the channel this evening, uh, Friday, March 22nd. This is a uh, live stream number 45. Um, I thought we'd come in here, strike up a discussion. We've had a real influx on the independent investor channel, um, at least from my perspective. Any new subscriber that comes into the channel, um, maybe doing so, may not have had the opportunity to go back and review some of the catalog of videos. If I could please get the first uh, thumbs up in the live chat, please. We've got some represent. I just saw Noella pop in here. That's really cool. Really appreciate all, all the confidence. Um, throw the first thumbs up here in the live chat. Let me know that this is coming in. Let me know that the mothership is working fine. <laughs> um, um, but I just want to welcome everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. I see Dave pop in here, certainly. And, and when the notification goes out to some of the other channel creators, I'll certainly take a, a little bit of time here and call those guys out. I, I see Investing Wisely has just popped into the group here. Honestly, uh, for, for you guys that uh, kind of follow the channel a little more closely than the rest, um, and for the new subscribers that have made their way into the channel, uh, I certainly want to welcome all you folks. Um, I'm going to be doing kind of a little bit of synopsis as to you know what you can get out of coming and, and seeking out some awareness message and a, a real important thing to me is to to strike up awareness on the topic of financial uh, independence and, and awareness. And I, I just think there's, there's way too many people out there that don't quite have uh, enough awareness to the topic. And I think it's really, really unfortunate. And I think that's a lot of the reason why the channel's extremely popular and a lot of people enjoy coming on. Um, for you guys that don't know me, my name is Ryan. Um, I do not do YouTube for a living, and that is the way that it's going to be. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to be making um, some level of, of small revenue through YouTube. I never knew that was even possible, to be quite honest with you guys. I really kind of felt like the, uh, you know, the way to success is to work hard. There's been a few um, topics that have been thrown in here as far as, you know, some side hustles and things like that. Um, and, and YouTube has been an interesting ride over the last couple of years, but I've always kind of stuck to the same general principle in introducing investing on your own to people. And, and when a lot of people hear that message, a lot of people will kind of sit back and say, whoa, two different reactions. Either you'll have the reaction of no way I can do that. I don't understand enough about the market. But for those folks that dare to dream a little bit and understand some of the fundamental basics of asking yourself some rhetorical questions, asking yourself, are you satisfied with your financial planner? And, and I'm not talking about justifying dumping your current one to go with another one. I'm talking about a real understanding of the very simple assessment that you can do with regard to what you're paying in way of compensation, okay? A general rule of thumb in life that you need to understand is anytime you involve anybody in your financial picture or your financial makeup, you're going to pay, all right? And that's a lot of the reason why we can deliver the message through YouTube and we can do it seemingly free of charge. Now, for you guys that know, I just currently rolled out a couple of affiliations with the program. The first one is with First Trade. Um, I'll be giving you guys an update on the first trade account this evening. And I've also started the M1 finance account. I started that as a completely passive portfolio and it's made up of all 11 sector spider ETFs. Pretty cool way of investing, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm actually really, really enjoying it. And on a day like this, when I look at a spider portfolio and it's only down a couple bucks, for somebody who's a new investor looking to get involved in the market and they hear me say something like a spider sector specific ETF and it just goes right over their head, it, it really need to take some, some interest in um, educating yourself up on the prospects of buying the entire utility sector or something that's a little bit more known to folks. If you wanted to get that exposure right away to the technology sector, that's actually the highest weighting that I have in that sector spider portfolio. And I can give you guys those percentages of breakdown. Obviously, that's a little more custom to my to my liking. Okay, you go into an ice cream shop, you're going to order what you want. 
I certainly ordered the ice cream that I wanted through M1 to deliver the percentages of allocation to each of the sectors that I wanted. For example, I put 14% in technology. That's just what I wanted to do. And as it broke down the line, I thought that 6% was prudent in materials. I thought that 8% was prudent in uh, utilities. But I can provide those breakdowns to you guys as we go. So those have been some of the uh, developments in the portfolio. Obviously, it kind of had a down day today in the stock market. Um, th that's fine. I think we can expect um, the VIX is actually at an all-time low. That's typically an indicator that things are probably going to start to pick up a little bit as far as uh, some selling pressure on the market. If nothing else, I think we're probably going to hit a plane on the stock market, at least over the next couple of months. Um, obviously, with the Fed pulling the interest rate raises off the table for this year, that's an interesting headwind that's been removed from the stock market. So interestingly enough, I think we probably have a, a little bit more runway to go in, in the in the stock market um, for for the short term. Um, I've built up my portfolio. I'm, I'm very, very um, aggressive on becoming a little bit more uh, passive across the board with my program. All right. Um, I have added um, a, a small pillar of limited partnerships to the brokerage. Um, I can provide those names to you this evening as well. Um, so I've got five limited partnerships now outside the Roth. I've moved those out in Blackstone Group, um, Enterprise Products, Magellan Midstream. Um, I did buy a position in Venom um, this week, actually. Small position, just small, so I can make the high 5 6% dividend in there. Um, interestingly enough, I really wasn't sure, but the dividend income has actually kind of snuck up on me. And I was looking at my March dividend statements and pretty awesome. I want to give you guys some idea about what we're working toward. All right. Those smaller accounts in the first trade account with around $3,700, I'm going to prove to you guys that we can get to that first $10,000 goal with just using a dollar cost average program. Now, the M1 Finance is started with $1,500. All right. So I put my money where my mouth is. All right. I didn't have to start those accounts. But I did it, and I did it for a strategic reason. I, I did it not necessarily for the money, but basically to prove that portfolio building at its core can be done by anybody, okay? And I wanted to have a teaching, a, a platform to teach from and show what we're doing on the M1 platform and show what we're doing on the first trade platform. So those are going to be really, really important for you guys to understand because if you're just starting out investing a lot of people can't get over that initial barrier of pursuing that first ten thousand dollars i see it all the time i talk to people all the time who think that ten thousand dollars is an insurmountable financial goal and that could not be further from the truth if you just put a few things on your side there's a few tools that you can put on your side that can really, really help you out. All right. I just want to welcome everybody to the group. Thank you so much. Um, I will be kind of on a little bit of hiatus over the next couple months. I'm involved in a big project, um, but I'm going to try to initiate the live stream for one reason and one reason only. We need to continue to stoke the fire on this conversation. It is very, very important that in one word, we are providing awareness. That's it, okay? If you wanna come on to the Independent Investor Channel and spend an hour, hour and a half with me every Friday on your financial health and well being, so be it, all right? I will not apologize for trying to stoke that dialogue because for something that is so important, I cannot make excuses for people as to why they do not make it more of a priority in their life. And I cannot stress enough in discussions with people, in talking with people day to day, people who approach me all the time, who know I'm a financial guy, okay, and really just want to bounce a few ideas off of them. And it's amazing to me, man, how capable people are um, and how if you're just willing to engage in a little bit of financial discussion, I don't understand the discomfort in the, in the talking. I don't, I think it's one of those 
super important things that if you are willing to enter into that dialogue and ask those questions, uh, it may require you to be a little bit critical of your program. That's fine. I'm constantly critical of mine. And I would only ask that of you guys. I've got Les in the group here, Les Gibson, who joined the group, who's talking about what to do with new funding schedule for this year. Um, I tell you what, the market was scary today, but I'm a firm believer in the fixed equities portion of my portfolio. The fixed equities went up today. So you guys kind of understand that counterbalance. Now, for you folks that are younger in the group, you're 18 years old or maybe even younger. Hell, this is YouTube. You know, you could be making your way into the channel. Um, if you're smart enough and you're 18 and you're smart enough to identify the opportunity in the independent investor channel, then I'll be the first one to commend you. But I can guarantee there's not a lot of that because when I was 18 years old, um, I was one of those guys that was financially savvy, but I did not have the tools necessary to get me on the right track. And I talk a lot about that in my catalog of videos about avoiding some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. And hopefully we can avoid uh, a lot of that stuff uh, for some of the, the new investors. Again, awareness. OK, there's certain lingo, there's certain dialogue that I expect you to be able to pull out in normal conversation when talking about finances, a budget, uh, finances, uh, pillars in a, in a comprehensive portfolio, um, what it is that you can do to maybe make a little side money for a dollar cost average program. What is a dividend? What is the benefit of a dividend reinvestment? These are all rhetorical questions. What account should I invest in? Okay, we've already answered all of those questions, but we will continue to answer those questions for new investors. Okay, you guys will understand for anybody that's new coming into the channel, I'm not a song and dance guy. Okay, I do not respond to that type of activity. I don't. I speak to you guys the same way I'm, I speak to my wife and my kids. Okay, it's the same thing. You're getting the real, real Monty. Okay. This is, this is who I am. I don't do YouTube for a living, but I do come on here and try to provide realistic in the trenches information that you can use, deploy, and put right to work. If some of you guys are here in this live stream for the first time on a Friday night, you guys, I provided those um, solutions for you through the accounts. You know, what is a Roth IRA? What are the benefits? You know, some of my friends have told me I need to get involved. Maybe I should take a little bit more of a proactive understanding of, of the program and understand what, what the potential benefits are for me and my family. So, um, again, welcome to everybody who's made their way into the group here. Um, didn't do the live stream. I'm going to try to initiate, again, the live stream throughout the course of this project that I'm running, um, but certainly no promises at all. So if you do see the notification uh, kick on, come and join the live stream. Obviously, this is, this is the think tank right here. This is it. This is where we are generating a subscriber community of folks that are deploying this stuff on their own. And I think there's folks, I've got Noella in the group. She's been with me for years now. She's been doing this a long time. And I know that there are business savvy people out there who don't need to be told what to do with their own money. Okay. I am just the charge that you need to tell you that's exactly the niche of the channel is that you can take control of that stuff and work it on your own. So I'm going to get to the group here and kind of work down and acknowledge some of the folks in the group. Um, thank you for making your way in. I'm humbled. And thank you for the, the kind comments. Um, honestly, the measure of success of the channel is, is built on those folks that appreciate the message, hear it out, um, and are using it and deploying it in their own lives. I'm only delivering the message from a perspective that if I was the one on the receiving end of the message, could I understand, articulate, and put to work the message? Otherwise, I've had some folks come into the channel and they're they're like, you know what? I, if you if you can't provide me benefit, I'm gone. And that's the exact criteria that I'd love for you to hold to the independent investor channel because I don't want you to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine either. But from an awareness perspective. Um, until I'm proven otherwise, P 
People need this information. They really, really do. I do want to touch on just a couple things um, with the affiliate program. I do want to thank some of the new accounts that have been started. Um, that's actually helped provide some level of compensation uh, for the channel. Um, for you guys that are looking for a side hustle, an opportunity, I have K97 here in the group um, who offered uh, the eBay side hustle and asked me if, if I do eBay. Hell yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever tried to have a garage sale and sell stuff for 50, 50 cents each only to have somebody come up your driveway and try to barter with you and get it for 25 cents? I know some of you guys are probably laughing out there, but that's real talk. Um, but some of the stuff that we buy, you know, we're discount shoppers. I like TJ Maxx. I like Marshalls. So when we go out and we hit some of those places and the kids grow out of that stuff, if I can return three, four or five dollars on a T-shirt, which there are people out there who will pay that. They do their shopping over eBay. That right there is a beautiful side hustle out of which we we do it all the time. Um, but from an affiliate perspective and, and bringing folks to the channel, if they do obviously use the affiliate links that I've put, I've got to go through the rest of the catalog and put those in um, for the first trade and the M1 account. I can't tell you how excited those two solutions fit into the program. Um, I've been solicited by Webull as well. I've decided not to endorse that. I, I do not want to... Uh, uh, compromise my relationship with Ryan Scribner. He's the one who does Weeble. That's his uh, broker-free trading application. They pursued me, and I've I've turned that offer down. Um, I, I turned down a lot of offers from a lot of people, a lot of solicitations through the channel. Um, they must think I'm something special with 13,000 subscribers. I know we are. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, I, I don't think YouTube has quite figured it out, but eventually they might. I just don't think there's a lot of regular folks out there who are willing to come onto YouTube and test the waters and try to find like-minded people out there that are also interested in the same freaking topic as me and that also don't want to be sit there and be screamed or entertained at. That's uh, one of the annoying things about YouTube. And I've actually kind of stopped uh, covering other channels. I don't, I don't watch other channels very often. I really don't. Um, this, this is my thing. This is the way I roll. Um, and I don't do this to, to, to build up the subscriber base insofar as if I can reach a new subscriber and get them excited about the prospects of investing on their own. I'm all about that. That, that, is, that right there is the customer slash subscriber that I'm going after. No doubt about it. So uh, make no mistake. If you uh, feel like so inclined to share the channel, do so. If you are one of those folks that have started up either the first trade or the M1 option, don't be afraid to use the affiliate link through the program. But think about it this way, guys. If you do start it, you're now eligible to sign up for the affiliate program as well. Um, so you want to talk about an easy side hustle right there. You know, start referring some people to these free trades. A lot of people have no idea that it even exists. OK, I didn't. It, it, I, I blame the independent investor channel opportunity for bringing some of these cutting edge products to the marketplace. And this is some of the awareness piece that you guys will get if you come in and kind of join the live stream a little bit. And, and that that's, I, I hope, I hope when you guys turn this off after an hour and a half hour, 45 minutes that you can be like, wow, that was a freaking brain massage. I know I'm pretty tired after it, um, after each one of these live streams. Cause I, I put my heart and soul and my mind into it and try to say that right thing that's going to get somebody out there realizing, wow, if I can only just take a, a little bit more of a proactive approach, um, I, I can be killing it just like Ryan is. And, and you could be doing, you know, multiple times better than me if you just kind of avoid some of the mistakes I've avoided too. So let me scroll up here and kind of give some call outs to some of the folks that have made their way in the group at K97, just been a long time subscriber. I've got Joe um, in the line here. Hey, Joe, we had a uh, music discussion before we came live tonight with some Jimi Hendrix talk um, for sure. Good, good stuff. I used to roll that stuff on the boat up in Alaska. I don't know. It just fit, you know, it just fit. Um, but I've got Les Gibson here on the line who brought up an interesting point, um, him and his uh, beautiful wife, they're looking at um, new contributions for 2019. 
I, I don't know. I'd like to know the group's idea about the 2019. You know, today was a day of volatility, introducing new capital to the market. I think it's relative to each individual investor um, to try to seek out your exposure, depending on what you're looking to do. If you're starting the account and you're under 10,000, I don't think there's a whole lot of concern. I think I would probably assess about the same level of concern right now if you're young enough and you've got even under six figures in your accounts and you're just looking to fund those accounts up, I think you're fine. I think where it starts to get interesting is where we're over the half a million dollar mark and you want to start to capital preserve, especially if you don't have any of the fixed equity pillar in the portfolio. Um, I, I think it might be you know, wise, and I've talked about this for the last six months, to continually assess whether or not you're sitting on a sizable portfolio. I know that's not the vast makeup of the audience. Um, certainly a lot of the audience is looking for where to start. You know, what do I do with my first thousand dollars? I want to start investing. Where do I start, Ryan? What do I buy? Right. Those are some of the typical questions. And I got to tell you guys that the M1 finance option, what I've done with it with the sector spider ETFs, really cool option. But I'm actually thinking about building a growth pie um, using M1 portfolio. And I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, the financial investors in the group, I might have hit him off guard. But I know Brent is really up to speed. And I know Dave is in the group. And Dave certainly um, is actually more up to speed than myself. So just another resource uh, to bounce ideas off with regard to the M1 finance option. But a really interesting idea is if you're in your 20s and you want to go ahead and own a piece of, you know, Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook, you know, maybe a CRM Salesforce and Adobe and Netflix and an NVIDIA, you know, there's nothing holding you back. You're not going to hear me sit here and say you have to do one thing or another. I, I do recommend entering into a passive program to start. There's reasons for that. It's to get the mental conditioning right. And that way it'll it'll kind of harden you up a little bit to be able to handle the swings in a growth portfolio. But think about how cool it is. If you had a thousand dollars, you could throw that thousand dollars into a portfolio of 10 different stocks. You could make it up yourself if you chose to do so. And it's just really interesting from an awareness standpoint that, that you weren't interested in it. That's fine. But understanding that those options are out there for you, that's the key. That's the key. And just upping your level of awareness is really the goal for the community on the Independent Investor Channel. No doubt about it. So you had some compliments here uh, for myself. Thank you, Sam, for those kind words. I appreciate it. I did respond to you, but I thought I'd make it official. I, I really appreciate that. I, I do. Um, this project has been very special to me. Uh, insofar as it's put me in front of a lot of very kind people from a, a, a lot of different places around the world. Um, so for that, I'm very humbled. Obviously, we have a, a, a real concentration of viewers and subscribers to the community from Canada and the U.S. as well. Um, but we've got representation on here. I mean, we had Australia pop in and say hello from, from all over Ireland, uh, New Zealand. And I, I, I do want to make a shout out. Very, very sad tragedy. Um, certainly there, um, you know, my heart goes out to those folks as well. Never, never, ever in a million years would have thought that New Zealand would have been subject uh, to such an accident. But um, un unbelievable. I, I don't know what else to say. But um, trying to change the world one subscriber at a time and, and empower folks in the information that they've understood to be in the investing community, what's socially acceptable and I'm not a socially acceptable type of fella. I guess if I just got on here, it's amazing to me how social media, especially, but the mainstream media, the, it seems like the more uh, charismatic and the more of a liar you can be, the more popular you can be. So um, that may be why in a couple of years, um, I'm sitting on a, a subscriber base of 13,000 subscribers. But I can tell you what, those 13,000 subscribers, the ones that get it, very, very loyal. And for that, I thank you. I really do thank you. It's all about you guys. So some very cool comments at the top of this thread here. And I really appreciate you, you guys. 
Um, I've got Sam Ike in the line here. Obviously, Joe's been with me a while. Um, one of the guys that reached out to me directly, I, I don't have a lot of time to do that stuff right now. I know Brenny has hit me up in the group here talking about um, some time on the side. Um, I, I have to cordially decline that invitation. You guys will see that the comments on the channel are not being responded to right now. I, I do apologize for that. I know there's probably new subscribers that are coming in, leaving some comments. I will do my best this weekend to try to respond to that stuff, man. But I, I got to tell you what, that, that, that comment thing, that, that consumes a lot of time. Um, I know there's videos out there talking about how non-productive that is. I, I disagree. I know how productive it is. And I know it's that handshake of acknowledgement to say, thank you. I acknowledge you coming onto the channel. It's just straight up the truth. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. This is the time I make right here for you guys to pop in and kind of throw uh, throw your questions my way. Um, and that way we can kind of revolve around the financial discussion and what you got. Um, and, and hopefully we can get some answers for you. Uh, Travis Haywood's in the group here. Welcome to you. It's awesome to see you again. Um, good stuff. Cruise down here and see if I can't get some of these questions out of the out of the live stream. Um, Joseph Prack, that's uh, pretty cool. Honesty, I've been um, like alone. The founders. Oh, you guys are talking about the Woodstock thing. <laughs> um, so the tax refund question came up. Christopher Blaine. The only two things that I've heard this year are somewhat problematic for folks is if they're claiming way too many dependents. I know in the past you could kind of game the system a little bit by you know if you had two people in your household and you claimed five dependents you know, to try to get that tax obligation as close to zero as you could, instead of just claiming zero and knowing that the amount that you pay to the government is going to cover your obligation, um, that, that, that's changed. That's changed big time. And my recommendation for the group, um, just from an opinion perspective, you guys know I'm not a tax consultant. I'm sure as hell not a financial advisor, nor do I aspire to be. Um, I can provide way more value on a Friday evening in an hour and a half session than a financial advisor will ever, ever provide for an individual client that they rip off uh, for their entire life. But um, I will say that my advice to you guys is be careful with your deductions. Um, if you've got four people in the household and you want to claim, you know, in my case, I've got four in my household. I claim three. That's just what I do. Um, you guys can claim the full four. You're probably still going to get a refund if you fall into the right tax bracket. Um, but um, it's been a little more favorable for those out there of you guys that actually have the kids. But um, and I, I mine doubled this year um, with with the tax child credit, um, whatever that is, um, it doubled. So um, help me out a little bit. That's just me. So, but like I said. Like a man of my word, I do take my tax refund and I I put it into savings almost every year. If not, those savings eventually help fund the following year's Roth contributions. So I, I don't know. By the time I get to be retired, I'll probably have built an empire um, using some of the very simple strategies that anybody can use. It's very, very simple. Um, and, you know, for you guys that have been doing it, just like me, uh, my my hat's off to you. But for you guys that aren't looking to strategize and take those injections of cash and having those drop points available for them, man, it really helps. It really helps to have those accounts established. And, you know, the only account minimum that's required, I believe, is M1 Finance. The last I checked was $500. So if you're looking for that $500 of starting capital in the Roth IRA, there is no minimum with first trade. Just keep that in mind. I mean, we're, we're trying to provide those lowest cost to entry opportunities for you guys, and it just doesn't get any better. I mean, Robin Hood comes up in discussion. That's fine. Webull, that's fine. I, again, there's no harm in awareness and, and what's available out there on the marketplace. Excuse me. Um, so K9 brought up the side hustle thing. And again, I want you guys to think about the recommendations for those, those, um, uh, those accounts. I was uh, a real skeptic 
uh, about putting affiliation on the independent investor channel. And I have come full circle. I am a believer now. Um, pretty cool stuff. And um, I'm using that. I'm going to leverage that opportunity to try to provide that transparency to you guys. Um, the holdings have not changed at all in the first trade account. Um, and I don't know if last time I actually had the sector spider ETF all set up. I can give you guys those percentages now, actually. Why not? Let's get into the nuts and bolts of the M1 opportunity. Um, yeah, so 14% in information technology. Um, the ticker symbol there is VGT. So if you guys are new to the live stream, I just want to kind of premise there's a few websites that I really, really promote on the Independent Investor channel, and I don't put the link to the Vanguard ETF sites in the um, videos that I that I post. Um, I will probably start to do that because that's really kind of what I consider the shopping mall of all things investment product related. And if you go on to that ETF website, it's going to display 56 ETFs. You're going to see the fixed equities at the top. And at the bottom, you're going to see the sector specific ETFs. I believe that's the exact title of the 11 sectors that are broken down. Get familiar with that page. From an awareness standpoint, you could go on here after you watch the live stream tonight, do a little self-education for 10, 15 minutes. It'll make the world a difference to you guys. And I've streamlined and trimmed a lot of the fat out of the confusion in that the products that are on Vanguard even though there are and may be even better products out there on the market, uh, from a from a from a relative perspective, Vanguard really hits the mark. So when I refer to ticker symbols, you can go in there to the Vanguard's website and check these out. So fourteen percent in uh, Vanguard's information technology—that's their uh, technology ETF. The next one, the next one that I feel like is the most Im important in the line is Vanguard's healthcare. Okay, so 12, excuse me, 13% there uh, in healthcare, ticker symbol VHT. Uh, VFH is the next one, which is Vanguard's financials. Okay, so there's 12% in that portfolio. So 14, 13, 12. That's how I've built this out. Uh, VCR, not to be confused with the old tape player that I used to, I'm really, I know I'm old, it's fine. I know you guys are just streaming all your stuff through Netflix. Now I get it. But VCR is uh, Vanguard's consumer discretionary. We have 9% allocated to that in the sector portfolio pie. Uh, VIS is Vanguard's industrials. Okay. Um, we have 9% in industrials. We have 8% in real estate which has really been kind of an under-discussed aspect of the portfolio. I've talked to a few folks who have built portfolios up and they really want that little exposure to the real estate. And any of these Vanguard ETFs, or if you're interested in what they're made of, it's very, very simple to hover over it, click on it, go into the details down in the bottom right-hand corner. It's going to give you the top 10 holdings um, that are available within that ETF. And I know American Tower REIT is in there. Um, some of the other REITs that we've talked about, I think there's just over about 100 maybe holdings in the VNQ. There's not very many. Simon Property Group, obviously, we talk about it all the time. But if you did not want to just go out there and buy a couple single names, which American Tower REIT has just been on fire here. I um, thought about taking profits yesterday, but I've held true with it um, because I do really believe in the company. Um, but VNQ, we've got 8% there in exposure, 8% in the utilities sector, which utilities outperformed today. So again, just give you that validation. And again, if I'm using words that are new, Diversification is one of those awareness words that you kind of have to become prevy to. If you have a stock portfolio and you've only got five stocks, it may be fine, but you're not diversified. Okay. The only way that you can be diversified is if you get exposure. I mean, look at this portfolio, guys. I've got $1,500 in it and look how diversified it is. I'm across all 11 sectors um, to my liking. Okay. I was the one that wanted 14% in tech. Uh, I didn't have to do that. 
If you don't like tech, reduce it to six and put that allocation somewhere else. But the 100% has to be split up somehow, and this is how I did it. So the utilities at 8% VPU, you guys know, I've owned that for quite a while now, probably over a year. I bought it well over a year ago when the channel was still in New York City, actually. Um, it's transferred with me down here to Virginia. So um, really good name. I enjoy it. It pays over a 3% dividend in that ETF. It's a good one. And I think the real estate uh, ETF also pays a very healthy dividend. Uh, consumer staples, 8%. Uh, BDC is the ticker there. Vanguard's Energy ETF, 7%. Uh, Vanguard's Communication Services Sector, VOX, which is somewhat newly formed. Um, that's going to have your Google, your Verizon, AT&T, et cetera, in there. Uh, 6% there. And to round it off, materials at 6%. So just a creative idea to throw out there. And this, this is real. I mean, I, I could show you and make sure my, yeah, yeah, see, it's, it's real. If you can see it, that's my pie. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have to make this stuff up, guys, but, um, uh, you know, it, it just, it validates the program. Now, for you guys that are, have enjoyed that exercise, the 14, 13, 12, don't copy my percentages, okay? It's mine. You can choose whatever percentage wants for you. Remember, you can choose whatever flavor of ice cream you want. Remember how we talk all the time about making investing fun and easy? It's both. It really is. But you just need to increase your awareness to make sure you're realizing the fun part of don't sell out. Don't say, I don't know anything about it, and I'm going to go into a financial planner and throw my hands up and give up. Don't say, oh my gosh, Ryan's given up on us. He, he skipped a live stream last Friday. Uh, this is not for me. I'm, I'm giving it up. I'm, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm done. Don't do that. <laughs> Stay with me. Very important, but you can kind of see there's a lot of folks out there that get interested in investing and they may have their first thousand bucks. And I, I've talked to a lot of people who are like, Ryan, you know, I hear you out on the single stock aspect, but I'm just not interested. I want to go with a passive approach. This isn't good for everyone. What I would say with sector spider ETFs is when they, you try to buy technology, utilities is going to outperform. So I think the way that I've done it is actually really, uh, uh, it's, it's a good way of doing it because I've got exposure to all 11 sectors. I don't know if you can do this and just pick two or three. You may, you may, it may fit in the portfolio, especially the utilities and materials who YouTube never talks about those sectors. Never. There's nobody on YouTube that gets on and talks about a material sector ETF. Nobody, nobody talks about Vulcan materials, Nobody talks about Lindy who just took over Praxair. And that's it's freaking awesome to me. I'm all about it because those companies do nothing but make money. So why would we talk about it on YouTube? Well, because it doesn't gain subscribers. But we're going to talk about it because for the subscribers that I do have, there's a recommended sector allocation that you should have some exposure to materials and, 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 um, and utilities. So if you didn't want to buy some of the individual utility names, which I've done, which I'm going to go over for you next in the brokerage account because I wanted to add some dividend income. I'm also going to give you the five uh, limited partnerships as well uh, in the brokerage house, trying to increase that dividend uh, portfolio uh, that I've got. I've been watching a little bit of Joe Carlson. Actually, Joe's basically the only YouTuber I watch now. I got to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how old he is. I don't know. Um, I, I really like his rationale behind um, his perspective of dividend investing. And there, he acknowledges that somebody could come on there and completely disagree with him. And, and he says that's fine. But the justification that he gives for why he does what he does is really quite good. It's quite good. And it's along the psychological line more than anything. Like, what he says all the time, which really resonates with me, is try to build a portfolio that's going to reflect you, okay? Build a portfolio that's in line with a plan that you can actually abide by. 
Okay. So don't sit here and watch the news and watch Google or Amazon go up every day and then go start an account next week with Google and Amazon and then trip and fall and incur a day like you had today in Google and Amazon where those accounts are trimmed severely and you can't handle it and boom, you're out. He talks about that. I really respect that a lot. Um, I really, really enjoy his content. He's really good. I've plugged him as well uh, a couple times on the channel. Obviously, I do acknowledge um, all of my sponsored channel, but I think Joe's doing a really good job. Um, he also uses M1. I think he's working with about a little over $30,000 um, in a dividend income portfolio. He chronicles that, does a good job doing so. Um, and he's kind of impacted my program a little bit in that I've kind of looked a little bit more on accumulating a little bit more dividend exposure at a little bit less of a share base. Okay. What I mean by that is if I'm going to buy 10 shares of IBM, for example, okay, just throwing it out there, um, even though I did buy IBM this week, uh, 10 shares in the Roth, um, my, my idea there wasn't to go out and put $5,000 on IBM, but buy 10 shares, $1,400, smaller position in the portfolio, keep the positions in check um, and really kind of spread out that diversification across the portfolio. And I'm very, very satisfied. Um, I think we got about $400 of passive income so far um, this month in just one of my Roths. Uh, 400 bucks free money so far in March, March, we're at March 22nd right now. Um, so again, the reason I tell you guys um, isn't to blah, 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 I have this and, and therefore you need to feel bad because you don't have it. It's the opposite. It's here's what I have. I tripped and fall to my face a hundred times to get here. You can do it too. That's, that's the approach and the message that we put across. All right. Um, Ryan, the stratosphere has had its name changed to the strat. Can't wait to do the first meet and greet. Um, I, I don't know. We're 13% of the way to my goal. As far as I'm concerned, we're going to get to that hundred thousand. Uh, cause I'm, I, I really do enjoy the channel. I, I missed it last week. I, I enjoy the break of coming in and talking about my favorite topic and, and hopefully, hopefully that really comes across in the message. Um, it really does because again, the things that sell content nowadays, is um, charisma, number one. Number two is lying. Seriously, if you can be controversial and just lie about everything you talk about, the truth doesn't even matter anymore, okay? And those are two things that I absolutely avoid on this channel, okay? Um, I think smart people can see through that. I really do. I think uh, if you're gonna be transparent with a message, you need to be right. Number one, that helps. Uh, you need to do what you're talking about. Number two, have some credibility. Okay, that's where that piece comes from. Um, number three, don't patronize people. Don't. I give people a lot of credit for what they're capable of. I give people more credit for what they're capable of than they give themselves. Okay, and I truly mean that. I really do. So, yeah, the side hustle businesses. We've kind of talked about that. And again, I want to formally kind of talk about Average Joe again. If you guys had some level of questioning for uh, Dave um, in the group, I've obviously sponsored Dave's support, his initiative as well. Um, I need to get one of the Dave chairs that he's got on his set because it's quite impressive. Um, it's awesome. It looks like something out of Star Wars. It's pretty awesome. So I need to pick up one of those. Uh, so good stuff, man. I've got Brenny here. Oh, I see. Actually, I thought it would be cool to speak with you. Um, so I, I need to finish up this obligation. This obligation is going to take me all the way uh, to the middle of May, uh, middle of May. Um, so I'm going to do my best. If, if I miss a live stream, um, I would ask for your forgiveness and understanding now, um, but no promises. Uh, if I'm able to kick on here and do a live stream, I will do it. Um, I do these live streams at a drop of a hat. Um, that's fine. Um, but I absolutely have one big priority right now and, um, I'm working it, I'm working it right now. So, um, once that subsides, I will be opening up that opportunity again. Um, uh, hopefully he listened on, on our first discussion. I thought we had things squared away pretty good, but, uh, you know, 
um, good on him for for asking questions, man. And that's that that's really kind of what gets to me is a lot of people think they know it all. Um, I'm not one of them. I ask questions all the time, um, and that's what's necessary for success in the financial arena is to ask those ask those questions. I, I think the ironic part about it is the folks who seemingly know everything in finances are typically the ones who don't know jack. <laughs> they don't. Full of crap is what they are. It's really full of crap. Again, I want to shout out to Noella for coming. Been a long standing supporter of the channel. Has recommended some folks to the channel. And I know we've made a heck of a difference in those lives as well. Welcome to you representing the beautiful country of Canada, that of which uh, I'll probably look to get up and, and travel uh, extensively when I have more free time. So good stuff. Again, thanks, Dave, for coming in here. Uh, good stuff. Um, biggest bull investor channel. Um, if Biggie's bull investor channel is actually an investing channel, um, I, I'd like to thank you for coming in. I, I will click over to the link. I'm obviously not going to do it now. Um, but certainly appreciate you coming in. And right below that is Investing Wisely as well. Um, run, runs a really good program. So, um, you know, click over support. Again, if we can meet in one mission statement, our goal of, of financial awareness, um, then I'm all about these guys. As long as the message is in line, I, I won't endorse the content until I've had a chance to review it. Because I think for as many channels are on YouTube, um, I think there's probably just as many, if not more, misleading piles of garbage. I wish they'd just stop producing content. They're wasting their life. So they're not that good at it. But um, and it's misleading. Like, I don't, I don't wish ill will on any channel. I don't. But it's the impact on the people that they're, that they're providing content to. Um, they're wasting people's time. So um all systems go awesome thank you sam for your radio check that was 46 46 minutes ago for my radio check <laughs> good stuff i've got greg uh in the line here uh, just an awesome supporter of the channel hopefully you're you're sharing the message with your friends and family out there guys through your networks um i may go an hour tonight really good group in here uh 62 folks but certainly wanted to throw the content out there um, make sure that we're keeping the fire stoked and the, and the dialogue um, going on the on the topic of the channel and make sure you guys don't forget me. So now I know that's not going to happen. I've got the one and the only Doug Whitaker. Hi, Ryan. Hope all's well. Well, all is well. Um, all, all is always well. Um, hope all is well with you as well. That was pretty cool. I should rewind that and play that again. What I just said, that was kind of cool. That was impromptu. See, I can have charisma. See, isn't that great? So maybe I can actually satisfy the one thing that I do despise about social media and entertainment is the, is the colored hair and the charisma that I see all the time that seemingly gets people's attention. I, I don't buy into that crap. I think it's a bunch of garbage. I'm just a little more old school than most, that's all. But i um, like to know if you're looking at any of uh, the, the uh, aggressive micros, for sure, them, some of the micro cap trades. I've really been kind of off the cuff, haven't done a whole lot of stock moves other than building up a pretty incredible portfolio. Um, portfolio is built really, really nicely now, probably due for another portfolio review. Um, I'll throw down on some of the picks in the brokerage account now for you guys. You'd be interested to know I added some telecom sector um, and some utilities exposure and the limited partnership exposures in there. I'll give you those ticker symbols now. I know a lot of people kind of tune in to kind of get an idea of where I'm scoping out the market, um, but certainly I would need to do a portfolio review of the two bigger accounts, but the brokerage account, man, that was a good day today, down $2,800. Awesome. So for if you guys actually heard what I just said, it's those are some of the, my most popular videos when, it's when I come on and talk about a down day in the market. I don't know why. I, I don't really care. I didn't really watch it today. I was too busy. Um, but um, uh, stand by a sec here. Let me jump in here. And I'll give you a rundown of my brokerage. Um, again, the idea here was to try to add a little bit more dividend exposure to the mix. Um, so Comcast on evaluation, we added 30 shares here. Um, Com 
Comcast was was really nice to add closer to a 3% dividend. I don't know if any of you guys looked at CVS this week, but CVS is really kind of on my conviction hot list right now. Um, that's a good one. The um, utilities that I added, I added these in fairly small denominations, um, 12 shares of Dominion Energy I added just to give a little exposure there, $900 position there, nothing crazy, nothing huge. That's just what it is. Um, the next one is Duke Energy. We picked up 10 shares of Duke Energy. I've done nothing in this life other than just watch Duke Energy go up slowly and pay a, a, a phenomenal dividend every single quarter. So I just became another, and I've owned Duke in the past. Duke is actually one of the biggest stock trades that I've ever had. I bought it at $36 a share. This was many moons ago, obviously. Now it's creeping up to $90 a share, but still with the 5% dividend, um, we took a little crack at this. And these are buy and hold long and get those dividends um, accumulating on each of these holdings. The next one, a Duke Energy ticker symbol D-U-K and Dominion Energy ticker symbol D, as in just Delta, okay? Um, Nextera Energy is the next one. Five shares of Nextera, N-E-E, -E, Nextera, all these stocks were up today. Utilities outperformed today while the market was um, seemingly um, had got sick today, um, so it was not doing well. But Nextera, ticker symbol N-E-E, -E, uh, and finally, Southern Company. Um, so we picked up the Southern Company for the first time I've ever owned this, 20 shares of the Southern Company. Uh, $1,000 position there, 20 shares, uh, ticker symbol SO. So added some of that utilities uh, exposure there with the Comcast and the brokerage. Um, and then I'll cruise down here and the bond, excuse, and Verizon. Verizon had a great day today um, up two and a half percent. So that was really nice. Uh, so we picked up a small position in Verizon. Um, we're, we're up 3% in Verizon, not bad. Uh, Verizon's one of those 5% dividend payers. If you were looking for one of those dividend aristocrats, Verizon is one of them. And then finally, the, the five limited partnerships, I promised you guys the ticker symbols on this. Uh, for you guys that are into stock, uh, this is kind of how I roll. These are actual holdings. Blackstone Group, you know, I've been an advocate of for years. Um, Blackstone's been on a nice tear. Um, except for today, it kind of took a haircut, a 3%, 2.5% haircut today. Um, but um, Enterprise Products Partners Limited Partnership, EPD, picked up 20 shares of that. Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP, Planes, All American Pipeline, ticker symbol PAA, and finally Viper Energy Partners, VNOM. It was one of those that I recommended about a year and a half back on the channel in the history, um, and, and it's done quite well. Uh, you know, pay a 5% dividend while you're while you're waiting for that to shake out anyway. So um, those have been some of the additions to the broke. There's been others as well. Um, some really cool stuff we've added. Um, Bought Boeing at the wrong time. I don't know what you guys are doing with that, but we're holding that that will sift out over time. Very unfortunate accident, but um, everything that I can gather just from an interested stockholder perspective, I'll, I'll take that stock into a 13% downturn any day. I'm actually thinking about doubling up on the position, but we'll continue to monitor Boeing, uh, ticker symbol BA. Um, we'll continue to monitor that, but it looked like it's, it was pilot error, actually, is what happened there. They panicked and didn't hit the override switch. So and they said with the level of training that those uh, pilots had actually over there, um, those pilots just would have been just starting um, their career here in the U.S. So just to give you a little bit of perspective on the on on that casualty, it's pretty bad stuff. But uh, anyway. Um, I'm not going anywhere with Boeing or we're, we're good with that. So anyway, uh, cruise down here. I, I do have Riley Griffith and, uh, Riley does make videos as well. Um, so a special shout out for taking his time on and supporting independent investor channel, obviously gain some awareness through the channel. 
Um, he says, Hey everybody, Ryan, glad the live stream is back. Well, we, we never really went anywhere. Um, <laughs> at least I didn't, but I certainly, I can't duplicate myself. Sometimes I wish I can, but, um, it's great to have you on the channel, man. Uh, support any effort that you are putting out there, get folks excited about investing. Pretty cool stuff. Um, something is wrong with the video. Oh, wait, it's just your shirt. <laughs> adjust your, adjust your contrast, man. <laughs> And I, yeah, these are Bugatti shirts, man, but I picked them up at like $40 a piece off of Amazon. I told you I'm a budget shopper, man. You think I'm going to pay $150 for a shirt like this? Hell no. Hell no. The rule in the United States that me and my wife abide by over and over and over again is we never pay full price for anything ever when we do pay for anything. We wait until it goes like 75% off. I wasn't kidding about the TJ Maxx thing. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm not. Man, I love shopping there. Marshalls, TJ Maxx, they're the same store, basically. <laughs> but, um, yeah, adjust your contrast if you don't like this shirt. I like this shirt. This is a Las Vegas shirt, man, for sure. This is a wearing up and down the strip. But uh, it's all right. Add a little pizzazz. It won't hurt you. <laughs> the YT notification just arrived. Good stuff, man. It's great to have you on the, on the group here. Um, I've kind of got to the end here. I didn't even get the YT notification. Uh, but did get the one from the Facebook group. Yeah, I, I did. I just I threw it up there at about seven o'clock this evening, uh, Dave. So I don't I don't know what the deal is. They changed YouTube all around. This forum is a little bit different um, than before, and I'd actually like to start doing an actual stream if I can, because I can walk you through that those websites. It's kind of irritating for me just to vocally provide that to you guys. But um, you know, over time, we're going to improve the technology of the channel. Um, as I see fit and as I've got more time to do so and invest more time in the channel, I, I'd love to do a daily upload, um, but it would need to be at my disposal uh, around retirement and golf. So <clears throat> that's probably going to be my retirement schedule is do a live stream every single day with the independent. That, I'm, I'm, I'm sickly devoted to this topic. And if you guys think I'm joking, the, the folks that have been with me a while know that that's exactly where I'm coming from. Um, very, very devoted to getting this message out there to folks. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Uh, good morning from Osan, AB South Korea. Wow. That is awesome. I've got Ray MC in the group here. Um, a big welcome to you. That That's awesome. All the way across the world. Very, very cool. Great to have you. Great to have you. And I, I don't know if that's MC Master Chief or what. I don't know if there's a if that's a, probably is uh, if it's a uh, Master Sergeant, Senior Master Sergeant, or a Chief Master Tr Sergeant. I don't know, um, but I'll say good evening to you anyway. It's awesome. Good to have you on the group here. Good stuff, man. Um, let me see if I can cruise down here. What is the difference between growth and value? And how should people allocate their investments in them? Honestly, it's a real, real simple question. You know, um, typically, uh, you know, when you're looking at a value stock, that value is going to be synonymous with offering uh, some sort of value to a shareholder over a prolonged amount of time. And that value is going to be realized in the form of a dividend. Okay. Okay. So if you think about value investing, value investors are interested in the dividend yield of the stock year over year. Okay, very, very simple. So for, you, you don't necessarily need to go on a value and a growth hunt. Okay, um, I could sit here and tell you that CRM sales force is 100% growth stock right now. But if I threw out a Starbucks, what do you guys think Starbucks is, right? A little more difficult to answer that question. It pays a two and a quarter dividend, right? It is a growth stock, but eventually what ends up happening with higher growth, good quality companies is that they end up going through somewhat of a transition between being a high growth name while the business is growing. Amazon has really never, ever went through this transition or relinquished this transition at all. Um, but I remember a time when Apple computers did not pay a dividend. All right. So every company experiences this transition of higher growth, slower growth uh, into more of a value play. And depending on the size of the moat of the company and how 
people resonate with the product. What I mean by that is, can you ever imagine people not buying Coca-Cola Classic? Okay, perhaps some people, millennials, may come on here and be like, Coke's bad for you. I got word for you. It'll never happen, okay? Um, same thing with Kraft Heinz food, same thing. I've used the analogy of going into Red Robin and sitting down at the table and not seeing a bottle of Heinz ketchup at the table. Okay, you're never going to see a generic version of Heinz. That's moat, okay? That's what that means. Products have to be consumed from these companies. They've historically won, and their brand recognition is so strong that companies have set precedence, right, to offer these products because that's what people and consumers expect to see. So when you're talking about high growth, typically you're not going to be associated with any level of dividend. Adobe Systems is one of them. Amazon, Google, Booking Holdings is another one. Booking Holdings is a name that I don't talk about very often, but it'd be on my conviction buy list. Number one, Google and Booking are two of my favorites. I'm kind of off the grid with Amazon. I really am. If I could invest in Amazon, I would do it the way that I've already talked about earlier on in the live stream and that you could just start a pie and take partial shares. If you want some exposure to Amazon outside of what you're already getting with the uh, Vanguard's S&P 500 or the total market index with your small percentage in the ETF, um, and you want a little bit more direct exposure to Amazon, that's a way to scale into the stock is own it through uh, M1 Finance and just start your pie with your growth portfolio. Um, but um, Alibaba is another example, Baidu, Netflix, perfect example of a high beta, high growth, high multiple stock. And one thing that I key off on in determining whether or not it's growth or value Remember, your stock trading um, um, platforms are going to give you a lot of this information outright from a professional analyst perspective. Analysts are wrong. I get it, but I don't just discredit analyst information, okay? I can read information, vet it, and use it for my own benefit how I see fit, okay? If an analyst says it's time to sell a stock, I don't discredit that, okay? And there's analysts out there who say, sell Netflix. Well, why are they saying that? Well, it's because it's multiple so high and the amount of churn, the amount of money that they have to burn through to produce new content is, is scary. OK, um, but names like PayPal. PayPal is a growth story. NVIDIA, a growth story. Uh, CRM and Adobe, some of the other ones that I've mentioned to you guys. Um, and you just want to make sure that that growth exposure is kept in check. I know those are the ones that everybody talks about more often than not. But you, if you guys heard me, listen to how many stocks I've offered that I, I, I don't know how often Lynn B has talked about um, over, over the uh, YouTube spectrum. I don't know how often Vulcan Materials is offered on, on YouTube. You know, um, I talk about that all the time. The stock market is a lot more than just the stocks that are talked about every day, day in and day out. Um, you know, your Google and your Facebook, et cetera, those types of name and investing growth gets a lot of the attention, but I can tell you your portfolio is probably going to give you the most bang for your buck. If you're focused more on the value side of the house. Okay. Um, I just picked up Coke. I should probably give you guys a portfolio rundown. Um, but I don't know if I, I don't want to miss, I don't want to muddle this live stream up with that. I may just come out with a video um, here in a couple months and we'll see how, how we are um, and see what the stock market has offered kind of on the front half of 2019 here going forward. But I hope that answers your question. The, the, the difference between growth and value is always the golden question. Um, I, I typically really try to go after, after diversified value first and then dividend paying value second and then to start to dabble in the growth. I really don't think you guys need to be building a portfolio of five stocks, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Booking Holdings, and CRM Salesforce. I, I think you're probably going to be disappointed, not only in your program, but your initiative, instead of looking at it from a perspective of saying, I just need to buy diversification. If you're a new investor, that's really the only thing that you need to be looking to buy. 
and I've got I've got new investors out there on YouTube, YouTube channel creators, and I just cringe all the time. It's like, man, alive, you teach this stuff, but you're 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 falling victim to everything that I've done in my past, not trying to buy diversification. Um, and it's 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 really it's really unfortunate. Um, I can tell you, emerging markets for me is on fire right now. Um, I own the Vanguard's Emerging Market ETF. So um, I think it's VWO is the ticker symbol for you home gamers that are interested. You guys can look that up. I've made killer money in 2019 off of emerging markets. Go figure. So doing good. Um, Joe, the Golden Cross says the market will be a bull for a long period of time. I, I, I tend to agree with that. Um, we'll see um, over the next couple of years what happens. I mean, we do have a presidential race coming up as early as, I mean, next year, 2020 race is going to be interesting. That may kind of throw a little bit of a monkey wrench in the, in the stock market. We'll see what happens. But I do actually agree with you. Um, and the only way to avoid that type of back and forth and I've come out on the channel and said, hey, I've sold stock, et cetera. Um, those are probably self-admitted mistakes over the channel. And kudos to me uh, for having the confidence to come onto YouTube and been like, you know what? I sold stock. I shouldn't have. Um, typically, the biggest mistakes I've ever made in the stock market has been selling stock. Um, you, know, you know, the best thing you can do most of the time is just buy stock and hold it forever. Buy Coca-Cola and go on with your life. You know, I've added some pretty high growth names to the portfolio, but names with some pretty good, um, pretty good moats. Stars Constellation Brands is a perfect example. Um, added some pretty interesting positions in the portfolio, that of which you guys are going to be really interested in learning. Um, it's, it's pretty jammed up right now, making some really good dividend income on this deal. So... Uh, I'm almost to the bottom of the live stream. I may cut it short just a touch tonight. I've been very, very confident uh, and happy with the content that we've put out this evening, just over an hour. Um, if you guys haven't hit the thumbs up button, man, just kick over real quick, hit it. Um, I, I don't think it's going to make a, a smidge of difference. I think the algorithm for Google just kind of looks right over the independent investor channel. So we're just going to build it up on our own. That's totally fine. I'm cool with that. Um, but, uh, if you haven't just hit the thumbs up button, evidently that supports the, uh, the message of the channel. Make sure that this just doesn't kick a bunch in there. Yeah, it just did. Let me cruise up here. That's typically what happens every single time is it dumps a bunch of questions on me. And then at the end, I have no idea why. Let me cruise up and treat it, try to find my fate place here. I've got YD Smith in the line here. I see some new folks here. YD Smith at nightclub dividends reinvestment program. Um, so probably offering some sort of something, uh, a drip night wolf. It has a question mark. That's dividend reinvestment program. Uh, very simple again. Um, so, um, just from an awareness deck standpoint, um, at night wolf M one has the drip, which I love. Um, it, it really doesn't actually, I'd, I'd really like to clarify why D Smith, um, at night wolf M one has the drip, It really doesn't. It's actually a portfolio reinvestment program. Uh, to where if you own at and and that and you pay the portfolio, the dividend, it doesn't necessarily roll back into at and um, You can love that or you may not like that. I, I, I have my own reserved feelings about how I feel about that. I honestly kind of feel like, you know, it's putting more emphasis on the portfolio allocation you have because if you have an under allocated asset within the portfolio, whether it be an ETF or another stock, that AT&T dividend that's paid to you in that portfolio is going to go to fund the portfolio, not the individual stock. Okay. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind a little bit, but I'm going to see if I can find my place here. I've got RBA. First time I've seen you in here, again, it dumped all these questions on me. So I'll <laughs> try to backtrack here and kind of answer these for another 20 minutes or so. I have no problem. I'm not going anywhere. Um, and this is my this is my medicine coming on the Independent Investor Channel talking to you fine folks. Um, what are your thoughts on the uh, dovish Fed and the yield curve invert? Yeah, so I've already commented on the headwind being removed. I don't know if it was the political influence 
Um, I think it's great. I, I thought the rhetoric uh, last fall probably threw the market unduly into a tailspin. Um, and then I just saw that uh, today, actually, the yield curve inverting. That's uh, that's typically not good. I think we're probably in the eighth inning here, guys. Um, you know, what does that mean? For each individual out there looking to invest and get their stock market exposure, um, I'm in a position where I've got about $100,000 of cash on the side, hundred grand of cash on the side. You know, if I if I believe that the stock market was just going to go to the moon, I wouldn't be talking about that kind of stuff, but I don't. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have exposed, you know, capital to the stock market. I've got, you know, close to a quarter million exposed to the market now, but that's appropriate. It's appropriate for my age. It's appropriate for the investments that I have. It's appropriate for the multiple buckets that I have exposed to the market. It's starting a, an account right now with $1,500. That to me is a no brainer. That's a no risk proposal. If I take a haircut and the market goes down 50% on a $1,500 portfolio, I won't get on the independent investor channel and apologize. No way. If, if you listen to what I said and I take a 50% haircut on my sector spider portfolio, I'm going to double it up. <laughs> I mean, it's just easy money. I put myself in a position to win either way. Now, the larger portfolio obviously will have to uh, absorb a blow like that. But again, I'm not very concerned about Home Depot shutting their doors next week. Okay. That's just the way that I've always taught investing. Don't make it so difficult. You don't have to find or invest in Biogen only to find out that they can't pass their Alzheimer's drug and the, and the stock drops 30% overnight. You don't have to invest that way, okay? By the best quality companies out there, if in fact you even justify entering into single stock exposure, if you don't want the headache of single stock exposure, like me down $2,700 today, that was by nature of owning a stock portfolio. Those are the swings that I have to be able to incur. And I do. My risk tolerance is such that I can afford that, that type of swing. That's fine. The market's been on fire the last couple of weeks. Okay. That's something that I, I would, I don't need to talk about, but it definitely goes in uh, to my tolerance of understanding that time in the market's better than timing the market. Certainly. Um, but without those cliches aside, I know that I've got good quality stocks in the portfolio and those are working. If I panic out of them, I'm not going to do any good. Um, the best thing to do is stick and stay, make it pay. Stick and stay, make it pay. That's been a life lesson that I've learned a long time ago and it's really paid dividends for me. No pun intended. Um, the one and only Doug Whitaker says, well, Avi, CXX, it's coming out with these ticker symbols, man. Um, and TI Tilt will be a hot and long-term hold just like Kronos. Very good. Appreciate you guys sharing that knowledge. Thank you, uh, Doug. It's pretty awesome. You throw that in there every week. Uh, pretty, pretty awesome stuff, man. D do your own research, obviously. Um, if you don't want to do your research and you like gambling, by all means, throw, throw down. Um, but uh, a lot of different ways to make money in the stock market. So uh, just, just kind of keep that in mind. I've got music musings. Um, what about just the expert pies and M1? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I actually initially had the expert pie set up. Um, I, I built the aggressive one initially and then, and then kind of wanted to do away from that for the sole purpose that I already have um, a, a somewhat of a quasi, I, I have the option to do a professional pie with my 401k uh, being with the military, um, with the thrift savings plan. But um, I, I did decide against that. I, I looked at all of them. I thought they were good. I thought for somebody that is a brand new investor and you had a thousand dollars, I think you would be extremely well served that if you were 20 years old and said, you know what? I, I came to this independent investor channel, pretty awesome stuff. Don't know a lot about investing, but I'm excited and I know I want to invest. I, I might not be an aggressive investor, but I'm young enough to hell with it. I'm an aggressive investor. And you look at that aggressive portfolio and start funding that with the M1 option. I think they're fantastic. They've done a lot of the work for you. 
Um, I think the aggressive option actually has all Vanguard products, some bond exposure even, et cetera. Um, they do a really, really good job. And that portfolio will, um, you know, will continue to rebalance itself over time. Um, you know, start the Roth there, $500. You've got a great portfolio. It's really kind of a perfect portfolio that they've built um, with zero overlap. Um, some holdings within the aggressive professional pie that kind of got my attention. I really don't understand, and I just have never been a fan of having so much exposure in Europe or um, foreign investments. I I've just never really been a huge advocate. I don't understand why allocators always put such a high emphasis on owning uh, foreign stock. Now, I told you guys I did own some emerging markets through the Vanguard ETF. That, that's all fine and plenty. But I got to tell you what, you know, in that attempt over the last 10 years to provide a global economy, we kind of got on this discussion of owning some stock that are based foreign anyway. J just because a, a U.S. Um, centric stock doesn't mean that they're not doing business overseas. So I, I guess I just look at it a little bit different in that I don't need to own a Total Energy if I own an Exxon Mobil that I know 50% of their business is overseas anyway. Um, so I kind of look at it a little bit more globally. So as opposed to just owning a, a, a domicile Total Energy that's out of France, I might as well just buy Exxon Mobil that's, that's um, headquartered here in the US, yes, but does business worldwide. Same thing with a lot of the major businesses that um, that we advocate. And you can find that information on any company, their percentage of international business, but not to get off track, but I, I do, do I, I really advocate for that. Um, I think it's a good way of somebody going on there and very simply starting from the conservative investor and working their way down. It'll go conservative, uh, moderately conservative, moderate, uh, moderately aggressive, aggressive and i think it was the ultra aggressive that was the most impressive to me to be honest with you um i didn't really think it was that ultra aggressive but i guess i'm just you know a, a little bit more understanding of the the risk to the market and can deal with a heavier swing but for those new investors that's absolutely a great resource to get into look at the expert pies and say you know what I don't want to own single stock. I just want to own the ETFs within M1 Finance. I want to start the self-directed Roth IRA account with M1 Finance. I want to fund it. Um, right now, I've got 25 bucks uh, every month. I think on a on a, a dividend. Uh, excuse me, a dollar cost average program going into M1 Finance. Why do I do that? Do I do it because I have to? No, I'm doing it to prove a point. I'm doing it because anybody can go from zero to their first 10,000 and I will chronicle that journey when I get there and I guarantee I'll get there. It's just a matter of time. Anybody out there who's a new investor has to look at it the same way. It's possible. That first $10,000 marker is the most important marker that you'll ever hit in your financial life because most people can't do it. That's why I deem it the most important. Those folks who have made it to their first 10,000 and then on to their 25 and 50 and eventually 100. Um, I, I got to be honest with you guys. I don't remember the time when I crossed over into the six-figure range. I don't remember. I don't. What was most instrumental to me is hitting that first $10,000 mark because I, at some point in my life, thought that it was impossible. And at the time, I thought that I had just done the impossible. And I know I'm not the only one who thinks that way. So good stuff. Uh, let me cruise down here and see if I'm getting to some of these. Uh, in my opinion, pretty much every investor should begin with index funds. Build the foundation of your portfolio first. I got Riley Griffith. I really couldn't agree more with that perspective. I, I really couldn't. Um, you know, I guess the only offering for the sake of discussion now is making sure that you're acknowledging the importance of having that cash as well. Now, if you're young, I completely agree with you. Invest what you can, when you can, however much you can. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a big, big proponent of, of index funds um, and ETFs. I talk about them synonymously. 
they are a little bit aesthetically different in that index funds take more of a mutual fund, low cost, I will add. Uh, we don't even talk mutual funds on independent investor channel. They're a thing of the past. They're a garbage product as far as I'm concerned. I don't think you need to touch them. I think you're just playing with fire. It's stupid. You may outperform one or two years and then you're going to underperform and it's going to ruin all your alpha that you've taken so long to build. Whereas you could have just bought the underlying ETF for the, uh, you know, for the market that you're looking exposure to like the S and P um, and just match the market every year. That That's good enough for me, but uh, it's a great comment. I agree. Um, that's one of those awareness perspectives to where if there's somebody out there that's looking to get involved, you know, Riley brings up a really, really good point. And a lot of people resonate with that message. It's really important. A lot of people, man, are scared to death of investing. They're scared, really. So it's like, okay, how can we reduce some of that fear? And this is some of the things that Joe talks about on his channel as well, is your fear can be reduced by just choosing the right portfolio for yourself. And I've had people talk to me directly and they're like, single stock scares the hell out of me. I don't want to be holding the bag on Kodak when it goes in the toilet. I don't want to be holding the bag on a Sears and Roebuck when it goes in the toilet. Rite Aid, um, General Electric, you know, some of these companies, now General Electric's coming back. I think that's a, a poor example, but you know, you end up holding the bag on a stock that really takes a haircut. You can avoid all that by that diversification. So thanks for that comment. I agree with you. I really do. Uh, if you have cash in Robinhood, is it uh, swept into the account yet that pays interest? That, that's a good question. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Robinhood. Um, I know the rest of YouTube community is. I'm not. I think there's so many better options out there that provide you so much more bang for book for your for your buck. Um, Robinhood was first to the game. They were on the disruptive list when it was offered a couple years ago. That's all great and plenty. I just think um, M1 Finance is probably a way more superior product. And quite frankly, I find myself going on first trade more than I do M1 Finance because I'm using M1 Finance in the nature that I recommend to you guys, and that's passive. So I'll check in on the account and probably more than I need to, but that's it. I'm not moving anything with M1. I've set up the $25 to, to go in there every month, and that's it. That's it. I don't need to monitor the set the 11 sectors I have in M1 Finance. I don't need to do that. It's set up. It's good. I own the account. I own the asset. Wonderful. All I've got to do is put it into my living trust, and we're good to go. Simple, right? It's an asset that I'll have the rest of my life and probably just pass to my kids because I don't really care about the money. Uh, does the Opus mean you have to do K1s? Okay, let's see if I can cruise up here and get... Um, I have both M1 for long-term and Robinhood for short-term. Um, okay, that's that's interesting. I see a couple things there that's probably warranted uh, comment, and I don't want you to take this personally, um, but Robinhood does not offer uh, retirement accounts, okay? So M1 does. So I would assume that your Roth IRA is with M1 Finance and your uh, taxable brokerages with Robinhood. So if you're trading short term on Robinhood, be careful. The IRS is going to send you a nice bill at the end of the year. It doesn't mean I'm not meaning to scare you. I don't. I like short term trading. I do it outside my retirement accounts as well. But I also pay tax on those capital gains, as you will as well. That's why I'm not a big fan of short term trading when you're looking to build wealth over time. Eventually, those things will come. But um, I have three taxable accounts and none of them are Robin Hood. I have one with uh, Merrill Edge. I have one with First Trade and I have one with um, M1 Finance. That's good enough for me as far as I'm concerned. But uh, yeah, just, I mean, you offered that in the group. I thought I'd just give you a slight comeback from my perspective, unless I'm missing something there. Um, I Doug, you guys are talking about, do you all think I should switch from Robin Hood to M1? <laughs> so I'm going through the thread backwards. So I'm kind of getting the, the back end of the deal. Um, red wine tonight. That's awesome. Um, it, the answer to my question is yes, I do. I, it, depending on, you know, I would question the need for a brokerage account. Remember, the need for the brokerage account 
When I say brokerage, I say that synonymous with taxable account. The only time I justify that to be necessary in addition to a checking account, which I never use hardly, that's my inflow account and, I, and my bill pay account. Savings account, super important, right? The only time I would justify a taxable brokerage account is if you have the retirement account for you and your spouse, if you're single for you individually, and you're able to maximum fund that every year with no problem. You got plenty of cash and you've got plenty of funding capital for your retirement accounts. Once you have those satisfied and they be start to become restrictive with those caps, then you can start to branch off and start that brokerage account and start to utilize and strengthen a brokerage account. You, I, I just gave you the rundown of my entire brokerage account minus the fixed equities that are also in my brokerage account because I didn't want those fixed equities within my Roth. I didn't want that sleeping money in the Roths. I wanted the Roth money to be all dividend payers and stuff that's going to try to maximize my profit potential and accelerate my portfolio going forward. Um, but um, if I was going to give you my opinion I would just say this. I would say you probably don't need the Robinhood account. Look to maximize your opportunity with M1 Finance. You're really going to be happy doing so. Uh, get up to your first $50,000 and make your decision then about what you're going to do. Um, make sure you can maximum fund. Uh, making sure that you're saving cash right now. Again, who are these other YouTubers out there talking about saving cash, okay? If, if we're trying to look at this thing holistically, okay, I don't speak as if every single day is the best day to invest in the stock market. What I will say is the best day to invest in the stock market was yesterday with a caveat, okay? Acknowledging where the stock market is now requires us to take a hard look at making sure we have enough accessible cash on the side to buffer our exposure to the stock market. Very, very important to understand that for you guys. All right. I need to use the book scutter app. Uh, that's good stuff. Thank you, Sam, for that. Uh, Greg, V&Q, 186 holdings. Thank you. I, I thought it was around, I, I, I think I said over 100. I, it is approaching 200. And that the, he's offering the top 10. I did mention American Tower and Simon Property Group. Thank you, Greg, for that. I've got uh, Jeff Kosky in the group. I just recently opened and funded my M1, created my own fund consisting of 30 stocks across all sectors. That's awesome. Uh, I'm not sure if you used the uh, Independent Investor Channel affiliate link for that. I, I hope you did. That would have been nice. That would have helped us support the channel a bit. If not, um, that's great. I think you're using M1 for what it's for. Um, I am, I'm actually using first trade in kind of the same manner that you're using uh, M1 finance, um, kind of the same idea with our portfolio, I think, between the two uh, approaches, which are very similar. The aesthetics between the two accounts are drastically different, where you're talking about a portfolio pie with M1 and talking about just more of a traditional stock list with first trade. Um, and I really like it. It's really good. The, the analytics are actually very good. You get on there and scope out the uh, the uh, uh, the platform itself is actually quite good. I'm very happy with it. Very happy. And I know you guys will will be as well. Um, that's some good stuff. Vanguard sweeps money into the 2.2% market if it's not invested. Good stuff. Um, I'm going to cruise back here and see if I missed anything at the bottom. I want to make sure that if there's any names I really don't recognize – um, Nightwolf19 says invest. <laughs> so I was responding to something. I ferment, I ferment hot sauce and pay make syrup. Nice, man. The income might pay for one share of Boeing. That's awesome, man. That's the side hustle discussion. I like that stuff, man. And quite frankly, I'm talking to a group and a community here who's just like me. I, if, if I don't come from money, I hope, hope that resonates with some people out there. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who makes less than the nominal income. And I just started making some fairly good money in my life. But I tell you what, all the way through my 20s and 30s, I didn't, I didn't make squat. I was broke. I was fine. I'm still just as happy now as I was then, to be honest with you. Um, so 
right here. That's what it's about. Perspective. That's really what it's about. Um, go with M1 or first trade. Yeah, if you do, um, Nightwolf, if you do that, um, do use the affiliate link for sure. Um, I really think if I were going to pulse the community and the positive recognition I've got about how happy people are with the platforms, um, I think M1 Finance would probably take the nod there. Um, as far as the affiliate program, M1 Finance has a better affiliate program as far as I'm concerned, but I'm giving you my honest opinion, um, not because I'll receive a greater commission, which I will through M1 Finance. Uh, first trade's a little bit different in meeting that criteria to get me paid on. That's fine. Um, but I, I just think M1 is the best solution out there. That's why I didn't need people. Um, I don't need it on the channel. I don't need to fill up my, my channel with affiliates. I have two. I'm happy. I, the Amazon affiliate program, I think I've netted all of about maybe $30 since that started three years ago. That's a complete and utter waste of my time. Uh, and I won't also be, I won't be doing a tip jar in front of my channel either. It's tacky and I won't be doing it. So anyway. Uh, let me cruise down and make sure we got it. Why do I should try that? Thank you. Yeah, but the, the affiliate links are in the bottom of every single one of the videos that I put on there. Um, if you want a tutorial on first trade and M1 Finance, check them out. That's fine. And then those affiliate links are in the bottom. Just click over and I'll click you onto the home page. And I think it gives like three months on the cookies. If you do end up signing up, I get credit for that, um, which I will gladly accept. It's, it's awesome. It helps support my time. Um, and the channel as well. Maybe we can get some more equipment that actually works. That'd be awesome. Um, the cruise. What about just the expert? There we go. Good. Uh, Ryan T. Cow Ryan, you inspired me to actually buy individual stocks in my Roth IRA. Whereas before I only wanted to own index funds in the Roth account. Well, you can do both. Really, I'm addressing Ryan T. Calhoun's question here in the group, which is a sincere one. I just think the greatest path to wealth is with individual stock ownership. You just have to be more uh, patient. You really do. I mean, you can be down 25% in a year with a single stock. And I don't mean to scare you. If the broader market were down 8% and you were down 25% in an individual stock position, could you handle that? And some people would say, well, that's crazy. Why would anybody buy individual stock? Well, individual stock would have the potential over the next year if a stock was down, valuation was down, et cetera, got some buying interest to be up 25% the next year, up 50% or 100%, whatever it is, um, pay you dividends while you're waiting. So um, I would say that the single greatest um, aspect of my portfolio and building wealth, et cetera, over time has not come in the form of index funds or ETFs. It's come from single stock ownership. And that's the truth. Um, but depending on how old you are, there's a few things that I'd want to know. Certainly what your long-term goals are. That doesn't mean that you can't backfill some of the individual stocks in the Roth IRA or even own some of those individual stocks. Maybe you have an employee sponsored uh, retirement account, right? So that that's my position. That's why I justify doing what it is that I do and that you've just explained um, in that comment and that you just own the single stock dividend payers in the Roth and you're good with it. I do that because I already have that base through my employer. And there's a lot of folks out there that own a 401k and they're like, wow, I, I can add an additional Roth IRA account for me and my spouse. Yeah, you can. Um, and that just adds that additional layer of opportunity for you. And then you can start kind of funding that up and building it up over time. That's the idea from a builder's mentality. So um, I, I tend to kind of hesitate a little bit to say, wow, I'm excited that I, that I got you uh, into individual stocks because it's not for everybody. Okay. So make sure that you understand why you're doing it and that you're excited about me you know, kind of turning you on to the prospects about it. It's right. But, but I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people who could take 10 different, you take 10 different people and you give them the exact same portfolio and you say, here you go. Here's this portfolio filled with single stock. We're going to fill each portfolio with exactly the same stock. You're going to come out with 10 different outcomes because of the investor. 
that's the truth. It's amazing. One person's going to let it go, let it ride over time. Not get, one person's going to finagle and underperform. One person's going to get pissed off the next week, sell it all, and they're done. You see what I mean? So make it successful for yourself. That's what you've got to do. Make sure you set rules within that portfolio. Don't monitor it. Still take a passive approach, and you'll win long term. You really will. Um, I commend you. Thanks for coming in and, and, and sharing that with the group. That's pretty awesome. Really good stuff. Uh, minute and a half. Um, Jeff Kosky says, we won't forget you. Um, you can forget me. That's totally fine. I, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I just don't mind. It's, I'm really excited about that affiliate program. It's really, it, it's helping the channel out. It was something that I didn't do um, when I first started the channel because I was very, very aggressive on making sure that we were delivering the message at no cost to the recipient. And we're still doing that. We really are. Just by clicking a link, you help us out. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't pay that forward. Make a little affiliate commission for yourself as well um, going forward once you start to get on. And we get more users on these platforms really generating wealth for themselves. Um, and they can speak intimately about the platforms. And that way, when they're explaining this to other folks, they can kind of say, hey, I like this over here. Um, but maybe you want to look at this over here. Uh, or maybe how to utilize the platform. I really try to offer that. I think M1 Finance, I'm still very, very aggressive on this. I think M1 Finance is better for somebody who is a passive investor. I really do. Um, the sing single stock ownership piece is great. The partial share piece to M1 Finance is great. But I would love to see some existing other assets in place before we start justifying building a single stock portfolio with M1 Finance. So uh, good stuff. Let me cruise down here, make sure I got um, Ray MC. Um, you've got me motivated, Ryan. TSP readjusted. That's fantastic. Uh, started the Roth M1 IRA and traditional investing. Debt is near zero. Thank you. Uh, so I've got Ray again, man, from uh, South Korea uh, tuning in probably early morning there. You're welcome. It's no problem at all. It's the, the very, very least we could do. That That's easy stuff. Um, honestly, the hard part of this transaction was you taking the initiative to do what you just explained to me that you did. Um, and that, that to me is fantastic. Me getting on here and talking about my favorite topic, that's easy enough. Um, being transparent about the success that I've enjoyed in investing, that's easy enough. I don't have an ego about it. I just throw it out there and say, you know what? I'm proud of this because I don't come from this. I don't get, I wasn't given a free pass in life. Okay. I had to generate this wealth from something, from nothing to something. And for, for folks that are tuning in and saying, wow, I'm a hard worker, you know, I've got some income coming in or, or I want to be able to do that too. And being able to manufacture wealth from nothing to something is a skill that not everybody has because it's a mindset. It really is. And if you can have that strong mindset, you're really, really going to be powerful. I do want to acknowledge Brent is in the group. He just kicked in. If, I, if he's been here for the whole time, I just came across uh, his thread here just in and, and listening, repairing my dishwasher. So I'm not near my phone. That's awesome. I will still make my shout out for a weekly. Uh, Brent is uh, super devoted to the message and certainly helps us generate and drum up the conversation on investing. Uh, for the channel. So um, I said CVS. <laughs> so Ryan T. Calhoun wants a, a clarification on either si uh, CVS. I don't know if they're Viacom. I may be wrong on that. I don't invest in Viacom, but uh, uh, CVS was actually what I was talking about. So um, CVS looks really compelling right here in the healthcare sector um, on valuation. Would love to see you do an individual stock and dividend pie on M1. So that's actually interesting. I got K97 hit me up here. Uh, I, I may actually do that. Uh, I may actually do that because the next on my list, you saw me referring to a list. I've actually got kind of a dividend, excuse me, a growth portfolio, a growth only portfolio that's set up. Um, I may start it um, with a little less money. Okay. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. Let, let, let's say, you know, 2,500 bucks or something, we'll start that account, something like that, even as low as a thousand. But I don't know how much impact we're going to make on some of these big names like Amazon, Google Booking, 
uh, Alibaba, Baidu, et cetera, some of those names that are high growth, NVIDIA, Netflix. I'd like to have a little exposure to some of these companies because, you know, I'm at a point now with the portfolio that uh, uh, the growth exposure is really the only piece right now. There's some companies out there that I would like some exposure to that I don't have now. Um, and the M1 could probably be that drop point for that. So I appreciate that. Stand by for it. It's kind of in the works, to be honest with you. Um, and those are the names that I'm actually thinking about putting in. That's that. That is the portfolio. PayPal, NVIDIA, uh, CRM, Salesforce, Adobe, Netflix, Baidu, Alibaba, Booking, Google, and Amazon. That's the portfolio. That's my growth portfolio. So if I miss something, um, I could even probably put a JD.com in that in that mix right there in high growth. So that's it. Thank you for that. Um, we may do that in time. So as a matter of fact, that's in the cards. That That's going to happen. It's just... Uh, I'm kind of monitoring things right now, not not getting too crazy um, with uh, with the stock market right now. Um, I've got Matt Goodman. I thought you were, were on hiatus. I am. I'm on hiatus. Um, just not right now doing this live stream. Um, it's going to be spotty um, until the middle of May. Um, that's just the way of it. So over the next uh, month of March, remainder of March, and especially into April, um, things are going to get pretty chaotic to me. Um, and then and then my final. Um, is in uh, uh, May, so around the middle of May, um, certainly. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the weekly live stream no matter what. So thanks for your clarification. Um, but uh, I I've, I've definitely been on hiatus for sure. Um, that's why I missed last week. I needed to take a break from the channel anyway. So uh, thanks for the live stream. Nicholas says you're very welcome. Absolutely I'm sure you guys are probably starting to kick off now. Hour and 41 minutes, we're right on right on uh, schedule as usual. This is about the time when I actually start to feel like falling out of my chair um, and I start to lose my voice. Um, I, I just saw Becky pop in. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, Ryan T says he took some profits in Comcast, so you probably got the good entry point there in the mid-30s. Um, so good stuff there. Um, but uh, let me cruise on down here. How's it going? Good. I just want to make sure we're not getting into any other questions. I've got Terry Harris, who's my long-term investor. Um, that sounds good, Joseph. I'm uh, just drinking mine, sitting in the sun, watching this live stream. Uh, that's awesome. Wow. Very cool stuff. Uh, you're giving me a good vision. I'm here in Virginia. It's really not that, really not that nice. It's not New Zealand. I can tell you that. <laughs> so. Anyway, guys, with that, um, I am going to graciously bow out this evening. Um, I do want to take this last opportunity to thank everybody, the channel creators that have come on. Um, stock market investing just kicked in. Honestly, I appreciate you guys coming on. Um, wish I could have got to some of the last ones of these questions. But anyway, all the ticker symbols will be in the live stream. Um, this will upload live, obviously. Um, thanks for bearing with me through this time of uh, kind of personal transition. Um, I wouldn't be moving away from the channel if it wasn't for good reason. I've uh, been kind of off the Facebook group. But this would be kind of the one time per week I come on here and provide some uh, transparency. And again, in one word, it's all about awareness. That's what it's all about. So tell your friends. You can bring them onto the channel. You guys should know enough about my program, honestly, to sell it yourself. And the beauty of this is you're not selling them anything, okay? I hate selling crap to people. That's not my intent on YouTube. My intent on YouTube is to introduce you all to the prospects of self-directed investing. And we are going to continue to stoke that fire. Guys, with that, I'm going to leave you. Have a great rest of the weekend. And we'll check you again next Friday uh, for Livestream 46. Thank you so much for the support. You guys, have a great, great evening.